Salam Salam, inshallah everyone is doing well. So I was thinking recently about a lot of the things that I see online uh, with Muslim polemics. So a lot of groups, maybe this is the way my algorithm is on some of my social media platforms, but I see a lot of you know Sunnis attacking Shias, a lot of Shias attacking Sunnis, uh, Sunnis attacking Salafis, Salafis attacking Sunnis and Sufis, and you know on and on and on it goes. And there are a couple of things that came to my mind. Number, the first thing that came to my mind is what a colossal waste of time. Uh, and one of the reasons that it's a waste of time is the following, is that most of the people that engage in that are not actually engaging in the actual subject matter that they seek to critique. Rather, they are engaging in trying to tear down a personality. And what do I mean by that? Of course, we are all familiar with the famous example of Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah and his attack on uh, the peripatetic philosophers. And uh, we all know his famous book, Tahafut al falasifa I hope everyone knows the book, uh, The Incoherence of the Philosophers, which is translated into English. But what we forget is that he has a book that comes before that, which is called Maqasid al falasifa I mean, It's a pretty big book, right? There's a pretty, pretty you know, serious tome in which he laid out in this book um, this is what the philosophers actually think and believe. And when I was taught about this in, in, um, in undergrad, I believe, it was Sayyid Hussein Nasr, he would always point out is that when this book was translated into Latin uh, in Europe for many centuries, Latin thinkers or, or Western philosophers actually thought that Imam al-Ghazali was a philosopher because of how good this book was. In other words, yeah, that's exactly what we say and what we believe. What that means is that he really took the time to understand what is this thought process that he wants to critique. And then not only did he make sure that he understands it, but he kind of wrote it out so everyone can see it. If there's any critiques, they can critique him. And then when that was accepted by the community, then he wrote his Tahafut al-Falasifa. And I have a copy here of, actually this is a series of, of um, his uh, Imam al-Ghazali's Tahafut al-Falasifa and then Ibn Rushd's Tahafut al-Tahafut back and forth. But in, in, you know, he wrote it out, which is actually a little bit thinner than Maqasid al philosopher The people online are not doing that at all. They're really addressing people and they're addressing the very veneer of the quote-unquote group that they seek to attack. I see that, and this is just an example that comes to my head. I'm not here to attack anybody or any group, but I see this with a lot of Shias attacking quote-unquote Sunnis. They're not really attacking Sunnis. They're attacking Salafi figures that you know are not representing the Sunni perspective on the differences between Sun, the Sunni uh, understanding and, and the Ahlul Tashayyo. And specifically when it comes to Sunni Shia things, since the 1950s there has been this huge reconciliation effort between Sunni uh, ulama and uh, Shia ulama. The Sunni ulama led by Al-Azhar, there was a magazine that was, uh, I think it was called Majallatul Islam, that came out for decades in which there were Sunni and Shia authors that were writing articles and so on and so forth. I mean, if you want to critique, if you're a Sunni and you want to critique critique tashayya. If you're a Shia and you want to critique Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah, well how can you do that and not take into consideration nearly 100 years, 80 years of, of reconciliation or of works back and forth. So if you're not at the level of Imam al-Ghazali doing that, you're not really attacking or critiquing a philosophy or an ideology or an ism. You're just really critiquing a person. The second thing that bothers me about it is it's a waste of time because we have bigger problems. You know, we have huge monumental seismic shifts in, in, uh, in the world today. And we have an onslaught of isms and the different flags that people are carrying that uh, you know, want to march us outside of our faith and make us feel that we are somehow deficient because we are people of faith, etc., etc., etc. Now, isn't there, isn't there strength in numbers? Isn't there, aren't we united on the basic belief in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Obviously we are. That's more than enough for us to, to, to unite under. I mean, I mean, we can all pray together. We all pray the same five prayers. We all face the same direction of prayer. That's a pretty good start of, you know, in uniting on these different type of areas. So this is really a message to myself uh, because it's very seductive to get into this, oh my God, I'm going to critique this and tweet this out and blast this person, this and that. And then it becomes just a projection of your nefs. You know, it just shows you how weak of a person you are. Are you that... Um, shallow in your own understanding that, that that's what you've been reduced to just sort of sitting in your pajamas or in your boxers or your underwear and sort of blast away on your phone. I mean, that is a very base thing to do with the knowledge that Allah Ta'ala has blessed you with. 
So my advice for myself, first and foremost, always, and to all of you out there, is that we need to build on that which is um, the uniting factors between. Look, there are differences. I'm, I know I'm not being naive. I know that there are fundamental, sometimes there are really fundamental differences, but we need to learn to coexist with those differences because we have a bigger challenge. We have a bigger there's a bigger onslaught against us as people of faith. There's a bigger onslaught against Islam as a religion, Muslims as a people, um, in all different parts of the world. And if we are ever going to rally behind our brothers and sisters that are dispossessed, that are uh, you know, um, persecuted against, etc., if we are ever going to stand a chance at, at, at helping one another, it will only happen if we are united. And that which unites us far outweighs that which uh, disunites us. I hope this helps. I'll talk to you soon. Be well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.